Hey y'all, hi. So recently I have noticed myself breaking some of my own fashion rules. Rules that I have talked about on camera, some of them pretty recently. And when I say rules, I'm talking about guidelines for myself, not rules that I have declared should apply to everyone, but things that I've said, you know, I always do it this way, or I avoid this for one reason or another. And then I've observed myself just over the past couple of months, tentatively exploring what it would be like not to constrain myself in these very various ways. So in this video, I'm going to tell you about the fashion rules that I've been breaking. I'm going to show you some of the outfits that I've been wearing that have broken my rules. If you happen to be new here and you enjoy it, I hope that you'll subscribe. And a quick disclaimer here at the beginning, this is not a maternity fashion video. The concepts are broadly applicable, the outfits are versatile, and none of the clothes are maternity clothes. However, I am pregnant right now and you'll be able to see that in the imagery. And if pregnancy is a hard topic for you and you decide not to watch, I will totally understand. Now, let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Okay, so the first fashion rule that I have been keeping for myself for years at this point is something that I talked about in my recent video about how to find your personal style. In the first part of that video, I talk about listing your own personal constraints, starting from a practical place when you're building your personal style. And one of the examples of a personal constraint that I gave is the constraint of being a really sweaty person and therefore needing to choose clothes that are in colors that don't show sweat. And I declared in that video that I pretty much only wear black and white when my tops and dresses are in fabrics that would show sweat if they were in a more mid-tone color. And this has actually been a hard and fast guideline for me for years, and I don't regret it. It makes it so much easier never to have to worry about how much I'll be sweating at the event that I'm going to or on the day that I'm choosing to wear the thing. However, I recently came across two two garments, both of them dresses, that I love so much in the color that they're in, and each of them is in a color that isn't guaranteed not to show sweat, that I just decided to risk it like a biscuit and be okay with it if a little sweat shows. Now, in both of these cases, the top half of the dress is in a tank style, so there's not a lot of fabric pressing up against my underarm. I think I would probably still bulk at buying a black House, where there's full coverage of fabric all over the underarm in this peach color or in this brown color. Because if I sweat into a blouse like that, I'll get a huge pit stain and it still wouldn't be worth it to me to go down that road. But I felt I was able to go out on a limb with these silhouettes. This brown dress also does come in black and white, but to me, the brown is the most exquisite version of the dress. I bought this during the Oz sale, and I'll link everything down below. I'm not going to spend the whole video talking about what every garment is and where it came from, but everything will be linked. This I had been considering for a long time. I had been thinking about buying it for months, and when the moment came, I was like, Hannah, you should really choose black or white because there's a chance that the brown will darken significantly when it gets damp. And then I was like, but the brown is the one I want. The brown is the one that has been making me long for this dress and has been making me consider buying it for months that's been keeping it on my radar. So I got it and I've been wearing it almost every day for like a week since it arrived. And here's what happens when I wear it. If I get really hot, and it has been incredibly hot where I live. I wore it for a whole day carrying stuff around the house. I wore it to the farmer's market in like the sweltering sun. So I've been wearing it and I've been sweating into it. And here's what happens. If I get sweaty enough, a thin line of darkness appears around the seam at the underarm. It's obviously sweat. If someone were to look at me and look at it and zero in on it, that person would be like, oh, she's sweating and the sweat is getting on her garment and everyone can see that. That's the situation that I've been trying to avoid for years by never buying, for example, a dress in this color. But it's just not that bad. I might not wear it to a brunch that felt really high stakes with like people that I didn't know and was trying to impress or something. So it comes with a little bit of a concern Constraint. I'm just relaxing into the idea that it's maybe not as big a deal 
as I've been telling myself that it is. The second dress was easier to decide about because I found it at the thrift shop. And this is a color, this peach color, that shows sweat dramatically. Like this, if it gets wet, it will darken significantly compared to the base color of the dress. It helps that it wasn't an investment piece like the Ozma dress. And that also means that I don't have to be as precious about it. I feel like I'll be wearing this dress maybe in more casual situations than the silhouette necessarily implies. Because I paid so little for it, because I got it at a thrift shop, I feel like I don't need to keep it pristine and it's okay if I sweat on it. It's okay if I get sunscreen on it. And it's okay if a little bit of sweat shows when I'm wearing it, especially in situations like that. And I've got to say, it's been kind of exciting and freeing to entertain the notion of wearing some of these colors that had previously been off the table for me. So I've also been wearing these two tank tops, one in like a soft, creamy camel rib and one in a little bit grungier of a brown rib. But actually, I've worn both of those tops a number of times. And unlike the dress, which I've really been giving a workout to, the brown dress, I haven't actually sweated enough in either one of them for it to show. So it sort of has shown me that it's not something that necessarily happens all the time. And just being okay with the chance that it might happen a little bit has freed me to wear these colors that I love. Like I love this camel color and I love a brown like this and a top. Accepting what might happen has freed me to wear them and then that eventuality hasn't even come about. And it just feels good to have a little bit less tight of a grip on the reins in general. Okay, the second fashion rule that I have been breaking is the one about not showing the silhouette of my hips. And this is probably the hardest one for me, but also kind of the most exciting. And it's directly relevant to you all and the fact that I've talked about it in videos and that, you know, we are a community here. So this also came up in the video about how to find your personal style when I was talking about personal constraints. I said that for me, because I have hip dips, significant hip dips, one of my constraints is that I can't wear clothes that cling to the sides of my hips and I never buy clothes that fit that way. There aren't any silhouettes in my closet that are that way because I just feel more comfortable when my hip dips aren't on display. So many of you have been like, oh, I have the same shape. I'm shaped like that too. And then some of you in the comments on that video were like, I think hip dips look great. And one comment in particular said, I've always thought violin hips were sexy. And I had never heard that term, violin hips. What is a hip dip and how to get rid of your hip dips? That's all over social media. I had heard the term hip dip, but I had never heard the term violin hips. It makes so much sense. And honestly, just having a much more romantic way of talking about my shape, not to mention having someone come through and say, multiple people come through and say, I think that that shape is sexy, I really like that shape. It just planted a little seed. The seed grew, it blossomed, and here's what I've been doing. Wearing, once in a while, bodycon dresses that show my violin hips. So this black dress, I'm actually wearing it today, was a lounge dress. It was something that I was sleeping in, actually wearing around the house. I just decided to wear it out to dinner when I was on the Creators and Friends trip. And that was the first time that I have freed my violin hips. I was like, I'm just gonna let them out. It was like the debut of the violin hips. And I felt great because I love this bodycon silhouette. I love how other people look in it. I've always felt like it was such a shame that I had this personal constraint because it closed the door on all sorts of beautiful silhouettes like this brown dress that I'll also show you. So much was off the table for me because I was trying to hide the sides of my hips. And the thing that I have realized, two things actually, and sort of tentatively allowing myself to dress this way, I mean, partly it's because I don't have that much in my wardrobe. Like this, again, was a lounge dress. I'm not going to go out and buy a whole bunch of new stuff just to show off my violin hips. It's just that when something comes along like this brown dress, it doesn't exactly disguise them. I'm letting that be okay. And what I've realized since tiptoeing into this realm is, one, 
And this is something I've seen from reviewing the footage, you know, like the B-roll footage for this video. When you're standing straight in front of the mirror and you're looking at yourself straight on and you're static, or even if you're just taking a static picture of yourself, something like that, an element of silhouette is gonna stand out really clearly. But when you're in motion, when you are living your life, when you're walking to dinner, getting in and out of your chair, walking across the room, your angles are always changing, you're moving, you're twisting, you're not like standing there straight up and down in front of people and being like, hello, this is how I look. And something like just exactly what the curve looks like here or there. It doesn't stand out as clearly. It doesn't make as much of a statement as it does to me in the mirror, just standing straight, looking at myself and being like, how do I look in this? So what matters, and this is the second thing that I've learned, is being at peace with it myself. What matters is me being like, this is how I look in this dress, and I have chosen for this to be okay. I've chosen to show this part of my body with this garment. It's not gonna feel weird to me. That's what matters, and if I can let it go emotionally, it's also just not really there visually. Again, when you're living in your clothes, when you're in motion. And and it just doesn't manifest as being as big of a deal as I have sort of worked it up to be in my mind, similar to the sweat thing. And lastly, this is more of a little practical tip. I have also learned that I feel better in body con dresses like this when I'm also in heels. I feel like it balances it out. There's something about the posture, the gait that comes with heels. And maybe it is just the confidence that comes with heels. But when I decided, for example, to wear this black dress, to wear it to dinner, when I put Put on the heels that I wore with it, which are also the heels that I'm modeling in the B-roll footage, the way I felt up on those heels in this dress washed away any last shreds of doubt that I was having about whether or not I wanted my violin hips on show. So if this is you and you're kind of considering tiptoeing down this path as well, maybe try a pair of heels. But at the end of the day, you heard it here first, violin hips are sexy. Thank you so much to the commenter who provided me with that terminology and for all of you who have been connecting with me about this issue behind the scenes. And lastly, I don't even know what to say about this one except I'm a grown up. That's how I feel. That's how this has made me feel. The constraint has to do with white clothing. I love white clothing right now. I, I think that this came up in a video about Pinterest inspiration, refreshing my closet without buying a bunch of new clothes. That's what the video was about. And I'll link that below, of course. I've been so drawn to imagery of monochromatic white outfits lately, and I have been collecting little bits and pieces here and there, mostly secondhand, but one really beautiful investment piece, that white Jenny Kane button down. I've been collecting these pieces and wearing all white a lot. Now, in previous videos when I've talked about this, I've talked about the fact that I often will change out of my white clothes to eat dinner. And what I meant was I do that at home. Like I, if I'm wearing a white shirt and we're about to sit down for dinner, I'll go and just change so that I don't have to worry about whether I'm going to get the shirt dirty or not. But I've been wearing so much white and I've been so into it that I've wanted to wear it out to dinner. And it's one thing to change into a different shirt at home, but it's another thing to not be able to wear any of your favorite summer outfits when you're going out to dinner. I just got to a point where I was like, I want to wear this white linen shirt to dinner. This is what I feel good in right now. This is my favorite thing for wearing right now today. It's what I want to be there. In, I'm just gonna try not to spill on it. So I've been doing it. I've been wearing my white clothes even while eating, and I've just been careful. And there have been no disasters yet, knock on wood. I do accept the risk, just like with the sweat. It's not even a risk, it's kind of an inevitability. Someday, something is gonna get on one of those white garments. But if that happens, I'll just use cold water, try to get the stain out, wash it when I get home, and it'll be fine. I mean, I have all these clothes in washable fabrics. Most of them are secondhand, and I'm just not worried about them getting totally ruined. And just like the other two, letting go of the perceived constraint, which is kind of what it was, has been so freeing. And I've learned that I am capable of eating a whole meal without spilling something on my white shirt. I've had to be a little bit more mindful, but I've been mindful and it's worked and I've managed. And the more times I've gotten through dinner without getting something on my white shirt, the more I've felt confident to do it again. And it's like I've reconceived of myself as a careful 
person who can eat a meal in white, whereas before I conceived of myself as a hot mess of a person who was always going to get a stain on her white clothes. It turns out that to a point, up to a point, I was the one who had the power over that. And that is kind of the moral of the story with all of this. Some constraints, some practical constraints, are just the way they are, and I think it's really important to acknowledge them, and it's really helpful to use them to build your personal style. For example, what springs to mind from that video is the one about footwear and the weather where you live. You know, some things are genuinely beyond your control. But when it comes to these constraints that are kind of matters of personal preference that might be shame-based or might be based in conceiving of oneself as being a way that actually might be something that you have the power to change if you want to. The needle can move. That's what I've been learning. And as someone who loves aesthetics and style and clothes and personal evolution in general and the way that all of those things are interconnected, it's been fascinating to be making fashion videos right as some of these things are starting to shift so that I'm paying hyper attention to my own habits and really tracking them as they begin to evolve. And I, I wanted to sit down to make this video and kind of check in about it now. Things might be different in six months or a year, and I'll try to remember to check back. But once I got the idea, I realized that there was definitely enough fodder for a full video just based on these couple of small changes that I've made recently. So I hope that you enjoyed watching. Of course, I would love to know if you have thoughts on any of these or if you have totally different fashion rules for yourself that you have broken at some point and what that's been like for you, please share if you'd like to share. Of course, I hope that you'll subscribe, like, etc. But most of all, don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world.